Hello and welcome back to This Is Us Portland, a community conversation. We are continually looking for topics that can bring our community back together and start great conversations. And I'm going to have Allie Benke today introduce our, our guest for today. Hi, so welcome back. I'm happy to be here. Um, this is Allie Banky, and I'm here with Joanna Kroll, who's been on our podcast before. Um, she's joined us at least one time before, but we are welcoming her back. She's a licensed professional counselor and a licensed alcohol and drug counselor. She works on the shoreline and has worked with a lot of families, and we're excited to, to have you here. Hi, Joanna. Hi, nice to be here, Allie and Mary. Thank you for having me. Well, this is thanks for I was going to say it is so good to have you back and we did have you for a great presentation that was at our high school so we were very fortunate to have you come and do that for us too as well as doing a podcast so we've been very lucky yeah joanna and i were talking the other day about um you know information that is useful to the everyday person during this epidemic or this pandemic and you know how, how we could be of service with some education and some conversation. And one of the things that came up is the topic of, is my quarantine drinking normal? Um, alcohol is something that is always kind of on the radar. And in this time of being isolated and being in our homes a little bit more and trying to figure out how to cope, um, drinking came up. So I wanted to jump in and have Joanna maybe open up on that topic and we can, we can start a little discussion and hopefully some of this information resonates with folks and is useful and valuable. Thank you. Um, so as we were talking, we talked a little bit about what's going on with the COVID-19. And so mental health has definitely been affected for a lot of people with the pandemic. It's anxious, anxiety provoking. Um, it's a new normal. It's something that we haven't experienced before. And one thing that happens with anxiety and uncertainty is people tend to self-medicate at times with alcohol. And so what I'm seeing in my practice is people calling me, coming into the office and saying, you know, I'm drinking more. Is this normal? And so it's nice to open up a conversation to have people really look at what is normal drinking, um, what is binge drinking, what's excessive, what are the dangers around it, and basically what's causing or driving this need to drink more. Right. Is that, I think that's a great place to start, that idea of, you know, we're living in an extremely stressful time, and it seems like every day something gets added to the stress in the United States and what it means to be an American and what it means to be living through this and how everybody's doing it differently because all of our experiences are so different. But the stress, the stress is there for everybody on some level. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? What kind of stress you're seeing with clients? And um, maybe that's a good starting point. Absolutely. Um, so if someone was a little bit anxious before and you suffered from mild anxiety, but you were able to go about your daily life and then COVID-19 happens and let's say you have children that are home, um, your husband isn't working, whereas you were a little bit anxious before, now you're having difficulty sleeping. Uh, you're having difficulty concentrating. Um, overall, you're trying to calm your children down while watching the news and not really getting a good handle on what you're supposed to be doing because you're getting mixed messages. Mm -hmm. So it used to be that you would come home from work and maybe have a glass of wine at say five o'clock, but now at three o'clock you've had it. And so you're having a glass of wine a little bit earlier. And that's affecting your sleep even more because maybe you start at three o'clock and you have four or five drinks, whereas you used to do that maybe once or twice a year, you're finding that you're doing that three or four times a week. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost like it's slipping in without even realizing it for a lot of folks, without even being aware that that's going yeah. on. I think it's turning sort of the, the new normal, which nobody's figured out yet what is normal anymore. And slipping in, I think, is a good good way to put it because sometimes you're really not aware of what you're you're slipping into. And when you said people are coming to you and saying, "Is is it normal for me to do this? Is it normal for I, am I drinking too much?" and not even thinking about it as that as that they are doing it. And we know there's nothing wrong with having a glass of wine every now. That's not what we're saying. We're just saying it's time to maybe start to look at it and and decide how we're going to 
look at ourselves personally and maybe make some changes. Right, and to be aware. I think um, having an open dialogue about it, and when people ask me the question, I'm really glad they've asked. Because yeah, if you're thinking, good. is my drinking normal? I usually ask, why do you ask me? What, what's, mm -hmm. what's happening, what's different? And with right. drinking, it's, it's, it's legal. It's um, something that you know we used to do when someone came to the house, you would offer them a glass of wine, you mow the lawn, you have a beer. It's very much integrated into American culture. Mm -hmm. So it is normal to have a drink. It's normal to have a drink with friends. But when your friends can't come over and you're sitting alone with your children, is that normal? Mm -hmm. Right, right. And I think one of the interesting things I saw way, you know, way back in March when this all started to go down and we all started self-isolating, um, just in my cohort of that, you know, 30s, 40s with school-age kids, um, the amount of families who stocked up on copious amounts of alcohol. And it's almost um, funny. Do you know what I mean? There's a feeling of, okay, I'm all set. I'm ready. And it, that was the kickoff to the pandemic, which is just, it's an interesting thing to take note of that, that, that was the, the knee jerk reaction. Toilet Absolutely. paper is what I like joked, right? Like people. Toilet paper, paper, paper bread alcohol. and my wine. Yeah. Toilet yeah. paper bread and my wine. Got it. Right, right. Well, and it's interesting too that the, the liquor stores are essential, so they have remained yeah. open. And there's a lot of different layers to that, but it's one thing that we can get our food and you can get your alcohol and so you can be comfortable in your home. And then we have the Zoom on top of it. So I'm hearing a lot about Zoom happy hours. So like you can drink with 10 of your friends alone at home, but on Zoom. So it's one way to right. socialize. Um, right. in moderation and as long as it's not excessive and you're comfortable with it that's fine I was gonna say in moderation it's an okay coping skill it's a connection and it's the problem like you said is when it's moving earlier in the day and it's becoming a norm absolutely small amounts of alcohol really do help with anxious feelings so if you're feeling anxious and you're having a glass of wine a couple of nights a week um, the CDC and SAMHSA both say that normal drinking is one glass of wine or one cocktail drink beer a night for women and two okay. for men. Okay. Um, so that's considered normal. Yeah. Okay. Right. So this, you, you know, we're not sitting here having a conversation about don't ever have a drink ever because it's totally, it is, it is a, it is a coping mechanism to, to relax at the end of the night. It's just how much and when and where and those are the things to pay attention to um i like what you said about are you doing it when you know you know your kids are out of control and it's your only mechanism to keep yourself in control that might be a time to pinpoint the behavior and just pay attention to it absolutely and usually when someone says is my drinking normal there's a concern somewhere and so i usually start with why are you asking is has something changed Right. And right. we know something's changed in, you know, the state of our union, really, with between the COVID and other things that are going on in the news. We know something's changed. It's how are we managing that change? Right. And so having a glass of wine at night, not a problem. Starting at 3 p.m. And binge drinking is considered five drinks in a sitting for men and four drinks in a sitting for women. Mm -hmm. So if you're having two glasses of wine, it's more than one, but it's not a big alert. If many nights in a row you're having four or five, then I raise an eyebrow and go, let's work with that. Like, how do you want to cut down? Do you want to cut down? And, right. And, and let's look at how we can start to do that. Right. Maybe, I think, uh, yeah, I go ahead, Maybe Mary. talk a little bit about how um, the blood alcohol level as it's going up, what, what they could be experiencing during that time of what they're feeling and how the, as that level increases from that one glass to the two glasses and maybe identify that without, so that they can have a clearer picture of what they're feeling and what the next step will be. Absolutely. Um, as our blood alcohol levels rise, things like sedation, decision-making, um, it's harder to think clearly, especially if you have kids running around the house, it's a little bit harder to manage things with a clear thought to make sure that accidents don't happen. Um, and again, when you're not making good decisions, you're not making good decisions. So at four drinks, your decision-making capacity is going to be very different than with one or two. Mm -hmm. 
And as blood alcohol levels increase and you're getting your blood alcohol levels higher every night, it does the opposite effect of moderate drinking. Moderate drinking will lower anxiety. Binge drinking will actually increase it because as your blood alcohol level is going down, there's a physiological change in your body that actually makes you more anxious. Right, which is then how the, you know, you're also talking about the sleep factor. Now we have even more restlessness, even more sleeplessness, which causes further anxiety the next day because you're waking up, you know, not well rested. Right, right. And there is a really easy screening instrument that people can Google. It's called the MAST. It's the Michigan Alcohol Screening Test. And so you can pull that up on your computer. It's 22 questions. Just answer the questions. And, you know, if you had a few yes answers, it's probably not a problem. If you're looking at many yes answers, then it's time to really think about whether or not you want to change that pattern because it sneaks up on people slowly. Like, you know, you start with one glass of wine and then you go to two and then you go to three and well, it's COVID, it's really different. And then you go to four and then before you know it, it's like, wow, I'm drinking a lot every night and I didn't see it happening. And now here I am, what should I do? It is drastically changing the quality of my life. Um, you know, you find yourself in that position. One of the things that's interesting, um, since Mary and I both work for youth services and the impact, our kids are home. So kids are home with families and the impact of, of, of that connection, our kids are now watching, you know, adults who maybe they weren't watching quite as much drinking patterns and things because they weren't home as much, but now they are. Can you talk a little bit about that? The role modeling and how very important that connection is and how, you know, eyes are always on you. (laughs) Absolutely. Kids watch everything that we do and they really take it in. I think that they're going to watch what we do and actually internalize that a little bit more than they hear what we say. Um, I think there's a saying that what you do speak so loudly, I cannot hear what you say. So if as an adult, you're excessively drinking and maybe getting a little bit silly and not making good decisions and acting a little bit strange in front of your children, and then you're telling them to act a certain way, it's really hard to enforce rules at home when you look like you're not in control of yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then as kids, you know, start to experiment with alcohol or marijuana in high school and they've seen you get intoxicated um, many times, then it looks more acceptable and fun. Yeah, right. And, and they've internalized this coping mechanism. You know, it really is a family coping mechanism, which let's face it, that's what drinking becomes for adults often is how do I cope with my anxiety and my stress and my worries? Um, and they're seeing that. Um, on a positive, what would be some night? This is where my, my love for the work that I do comes in. What are some, some other things for coping skills? Because um, we need those right now. Stress is high. Anxiety is high. And we need outlets as adults and our youth need outlets. So can you speak a little bit to, to that front, what you might advise someone um, as they're moving through this and ways to, you know, ways to fill that, that, that need. Absolutely. So when someone comes to me and says they'd like to cut down on their drinking, um, they don't want to stop, but they want to cut down because they've noticed it's gotten to be a little bit more so. Um, So usually what I start with is if it's a habit at five o'clock when you get home that you're, Pour yourself a glass of wine. Let's look right. at a different coping skill at five o'clock. Um, yeah. Even if you're working from home, you're now turning off your computer. Uh, it's a brisk walk around the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. It's, um, you know, maybe picking up an art project that you can do with your kids, scrapbooking, like things that have mm-hmm. gone on over the past year, maybe taking some articles and putting together a COVID scrapbook because this is really historical. Um, it could be baking. It could be any kind of activity that's different than the activity you were engaging in before that you enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's starting a new habit, basically. Right. Right. And then consistently doing it for a while. And right. if you're having four glasses of wine and you want to go down to one, then yeah. maybe right at dinner, you have that one glass of wine. And right. before that, you engage in doing other activities. Right, right. And then maybe taking note of, I know one of the things that I say to folks when I'm working with them is taking note of of how you're feeling, how your body's feeling. So 
do you, what are the benefits of that switch of coping mechanism? Are you more vibrant in the morning? Are you less exhausted during the day? You know, kind of keep track of how your days are feeling. Um, and then you get a good gauge kind of the pros and the cons and how your family life has changed and all that, all that stuff, um, can sometimes be a good motivator for sticking with a new habit and sticking with a new coping skill. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the things you notice right away, if you cut down on your drinking is better sleep. Yeah. Um, better concentration, concentration, less irritability, um, just yeah. things that kind of happen cumulatively over time when you're drinking more. Right, right, right. Which one, is, of the, one of the things that um, I think people are afraid of, if they're, whether they're doing a, a Zoom gathering at five um, w with their glass of wine, but I think they're afraid of offending their friends by not drinking when their friends are drinking. And I think maybe just addressing how when, you know, I call it BYOD, bring your own drink. In other words, if you come prepared, have your bottle of water, have something already in your hand, and you shouldn't have to explain to a friend why you're not drinking. But I know a lot of people feel that they need to do that. Can you maybe talk a little bit about that, Joanna? What maybe those key things that they can say or how to make them feel that what they're doing is okay for them and they don't have to reject their friends or, or feel that now they're not gonna be my friend anymore because I'm not joining in with them. Absolutely, Mary, thanks. That's a, that's a great thing to talk about. A lot of people say, well, everyone's gonna notice that I'm not drinking, I'm gonna stand out, I'm gonna feel funny. And this day and age, so many people are taking drinking vacations to do a cleanse for health reasons. Um, I always say, if you're not gonna drink and someone asks you if you're drinking, have a script in mind of what you're gonna say. Um, you know what, I'm not drinking for my health or I'm taking a break right now and be very um, confident about your response. It's just like, no, I'm not doing it at this time. It's when people are wavering, well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, well, just go get one. Like if you're kind of wavering, people will kind of push you toward it. But if you have like a firm decision that, well, I'm not doing it right now for health. Um, so yeah. I'm taking a month off, I'm taking a couple of weeks off, whatever it is, just have that script in mind and say that. And oddly enough, it's interesting how few people realize you're not drinking, but you imagine everybody's going to notice that you're yes. not. <laughs> yes. Right. I think that's in life in general, right? Like everybody thinks everybody's eyes are on you and the reality is not so much. Everybody's eyes on their own stuff. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting, even just look at this whole pandemic, right? There's, am I, am I good enough? Am I a good enough mom, professional, you know, am I doing all this? And I think you're your own worst critic and really analyzing that and taking time to breathe for yourself is helpful. Um, I, I think that that moment of, yes, I can drink, but I'm choosing not to in your head, work it into your head first before you get out to the group of people because you're just choosing not to because I just don't feel like drinking today or whatever it is, but get it set in your head ahead of time yeah. before you get in that situation where you're trying to, ex I, I'm always a firm believer, don't explain it unless somebody brings it up. So the less said sometimes is better. And maybe they're not even going to notice that, you know, you're just joining your friends and you're all getting together at the same time because that's what you've been doing. And you don't need to to be really out there saying, well, I'm not going to be drinking today. So just all of you understand that. Friends yeah. with, Joanna, friends. Be, before we wrap up, can you speak to a little bit, um, might be a good way to close, how do we, if someone has a concern for themselves, for someone they love, um, and maybe, or maybe just even some simple questions, where should we direct folks? Where, where should folks feel like they could turn to? It really depends on where folks are comfortable going. Um, some people that are involved with the church, I would say you can always call the pastor or call the priest. Um, mm -hmm. You can call a therapist, uh, whether it be a licensed alcohol and drug counselor or a clinical social worker. Mm -hmm. You can give someone a call that's a professional. Um, phone a friend. You can talk about it with a friend and say, hey, you know, this is what's going on with me. And mm -hmm. I think I may be drinking too much. 
And then the next step, a lot of times I'll say when someone comes to me and says, I, I think I'm drinking more than I should be during COVID. And I usually say, if they haven't been drinking daily excessively, but it's been slowly becoming more, try taking a two week vacation from drinking. Yeah. And then if you're unable to do that, then let's take some other steps. However, right. if you've been drinking excessively, taking a two week vacation could be dangerous. So if someone's really been drinking a lot, I'll say call your APRN or your primary care physician, just let them know what you're drinking and see if it's safe for you to stop. Mm. Um, so there's a couple different layers to it, but if someone's just slowly going up and they have a small concern, try the two week vacation. If you're able to do that, notice how you feel during those two weeks, right. your sleep, your concentration, your mood. And then really think about going back to it and going back to it more slowly than you did before. And mm -hmm. just notice how you're regulating it and how you're feeling. Right, right. And there's such big kudos for anybody that even remotely stops to take, just make, just to take a thought about this in their own behaviors. I mean, that's, that's brave in itself. And there are ways to go forward without jumping right into a therapist. Um, and I, and I like that you mentioned that really just taking stock of what's going on for you and what are your stressors like, what's your anxiety like, and what, what, where may have you turned for, for coping? Um, and what other things you could instill that might be pretty simple. Um, there might be some simple tweaks that just make it a little safer. Right. If, if people are convinced they have a problem, I say it's like maybe try an AA Zoom meeting because um, people can join an AA Zoom meeting from the comfort of their home and just kind of see what that's about. And for families that are concerned about a family member, you can do an Al-Anon Zoom meeting and learn a little bit more about it. But if you're just thinking you're getting a little bit heavy on it, I would start with a vacation, start with talking to friends and family and see if they're noticing the change too. Um, and, and then go from there, whether it's a, a religious leader or a therapist, whichever you're more comfortable with. And maybe, maybe really as a family plan, because everybody is stuck home, maybe turn that into a staycation, a real staycation where let's sit down and plan. What are we going to do today? And then get the whole family involved. And maybe that's part of also that planning ahead so that you're not completely cutting yourself off, but you're going to be planning as a family and not identifying specifically why you're taking that break. Absolutely. Structure is always a really good thing. And I think one of the things that has happened with the COVID-19 and people being home is the structure that we're used to with our children going to school and maybe us going out to work has changed a lot. And some people are uncomfortable with that lack of structure. So implementing it back in again with your family can be a nice way of, of putting structure in and helping you kind of compartmentalize what, what happens next. And, and we certainly don't know how long this is going on. I think we understand that all of our lives have changed and we all have to deal with it in our own way. And there's no, there's no guidelines, there's no written plan there for any of us in our personal lives, how we should personally move forward. So when we have to look at things ahead of time and say, how do I wanna change? Or now that we've been home, do we like what's going on at home? Do we really enjoy having that time of, you know, being with the family that you were on the go all the time, on the go on the time, you know, all the time. So sort of maybe start to look at it now. And uh, along with that was sitting and having that cocktail instead of at five, it started at three. And if you're looking at the clock, if you spend more time looking at the clock, waiting for what, what's the, um, there's the Jimmy Buffett song where, uh, Oh, it's five o'clock somewhere. So at five o'clock somewhere. There we go. So we should be playing his music, I think. But I think that's uh, one of those important things that, you know, sooner or later, we know this is coming to going back to reality of life and, and easing into that as it is. Excellent. Well, I think that's a great place for us to wrap up and say goodbye. Um, Joanna, thank you so much for your time today. We're, we're super grateful, and I know that you'll join us back here um, in the next couple months to, to do some further podcasts. And if anybody ever needs to reach out, uh, Mary and I are also available. Definitely. So, uh, we can... services, um, senior services, yeah. reach out to us. Um, our contact information is in this podcast, in the details of this podcast. And we thank you so much. Any thank last, you, any last uh, goodbyes, Joanna, for us that uh, those key people – this is what you need to do at the last moment. Or we're just gonna end it on a high.
positive <laughs> note that we're going to move forward positively. How's that? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I just think if, you, if you're concerned about it, um, make a phone call, phone a friend, talk yeah. to other people about it. And then again, you can always reach out to a professional if you need to try that Michigan alcohol screening test online yeah. that can tell you a little bit more and see where you fall. If you're alarmed by what you see there, I would, you know, give a therapist a call um, or again, a priest, whatever you're comfortable with, or you can go to an online AA meeting to see if it's for you. It may or may not be, um, but there are solutions if you find that you're concerned about it. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Thank until, you. until the next time when we welcome everybody back for our next exciting topic. Thank you and talk to you again soon. <laughs>